Welcome to Think Tank with Scott and Roy. I'm Scott. And I'm Roy. Now, yeah, my name is Will, if you've listened to all our other videos, but you know, my, my nickname is Roy. Everybody knows me as Roy, so... It's his middle name. It's my middle name. So I'm just going to start using that because I've directed people to the page and on Facebook I am Roy and they go, yeah, Roy directed me here, but I'm listening to Will speak. So good on you, taking credit for Will's hard work. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, today we're going to be talking about... Uh, somebody by the name of Epictetus. Mm -hmm. Is that how I say it? Epictetus. I believe Epictetus. so. And uh, the art of letting go or the art of release. Mm. So, um, you want to give a brief overview of Epictetus or do you want me to... I'll let you do it. Well. All right. Or Roy as well. Well, <laughs> okay. So Epictetus, he was uh, ancient Greece, about the same time as Epicurus, mm -hmm. a little bit more well-known. And the idea behind his philosophy was, uh, if you can't control it, why worry about it? Mm. You know, uh, let go of the things that you can't worry about. Like, the things that you can control, the things that you can make a difference about, are the things worth worrying about. Mm. But if, you, if, if it doesn't fall into that category, release it. Because mm. it doesn't matter, that sort of stuff. It was, it was a philosopher of the mind as opposed to a philosopher. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, um... I was speaking to somebody on the phone the other night, and this jumped into my head because this was pretty much the advice that I, I think you needed to hear. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't done a podcast about this yet. This is a pretty big idea. Yeah, that's you know, it. We can, which can very easily be applied into everyday life. A lot of people could benefit from it. So why haven't we done it yet, Scott? <laughs> well, you know, I certainly have benefited from you know, letting go of the things I can't control. Yes? Yeah? Your scope of control really is more limited than you think. The best you can do is just put your best foot forward. You, uh, you want to give us an example or is it a bit personal? Uh, there's plenty of personal and not personal examples, I suppose. You want to throw one at me and then I'll throw one out? Or? Oh, I suppose we'll go with jealousy, I suppose. That's always a good choice. Well, that was the one I was going to throw out. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I think it's the obvious starting point, at least in my mind. Yeah? but um, you don't, You've never str struck? You never struck me as a jealous type. You're very easy going. Oh, well, that's that's because I've had to think about it and allow myself to let it go. I mean, it's not very hard to get jealous. I mean, jealousy is a perfectly natural feeling, you know? I don't think it's a negative feeling either. Uh, I mean, it, obviously it can be. I mean, it's a, I, don't, I think it's a perfectly natural human feeling. And so it's really not good or bad. And it's, it's how you react, I think, is the most important yeah, thing. I, I think the, the point I'm trying to make is if you're jealous, that doesn't mean that you're fucked or you're yeah, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's just it's, it's just things. It's that very happen. human to be jealous. Well, you, know? you you didn't sit down and make the choice and be like, yeah, I'm gonna be jealous about this. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. That's it. It's an involuntary response. And most things people worry about is like, oh, you know, this person's looking at my girl, or my girl's out at the club, and I'm that's worried about. One. I'm worried about what she's doing and, and and all the rest. And the reality is that you can't really control her behavior. I mean, she's her own person and. At the end of the day, all you can do is trust in your instincts that said, okay, I want to be with this woman initially and trust that she's a decent person and isn't going to go mm. behind your back. I mean, obviously, you can play a part in it by being an awesome person and an awesome lover and providing all her needs, emotional, sexual, all the rest. But, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, if she's going to do something or someone's going to do something, they're going to do it, you know? Even if, like, sorry, I'm, we're, we're eating a banana. Even if she goes out to the club and you're like, I'm going to show up at the club so that she doesn't flirt with anybody or nothing bad happens, etc. Like, even if you create an environment where she doesn't act in a particular way, even if she doesn't act in a particular way, the intention is still there. That's it. That's it. I mean, all you're doing is delaying the inevitable if that's the thing that was going to happen. Mm. I mean, there's no need to overreact and assume, okay, I have to do this because otherwise it's going to happen. Because obviously, the moment you turn your back later on, it's going to happen. Mm. So, you know, the best thing you can do is just pick you, make you a best choice as far as a lady's concerned and trust and trust each other and all the rest. I mean, that's all you can really do. Well, in response to that, to be honest, if you are in a relationship and you find that happening, I uh, find um, a let it happen and, and go. Because you can't spend the rest of your life following her around skirting back and forth through what you want to happen. Yeah. You know? Um, because at the end of the day, you're unhappy. You know? Are we talking about people being unfaithful or... What? Not necessarily unfaithful, but even okay. if the idea in your head is the case, mm. you know, you got to let go. And that's where Epictetus, Epictetus, Epictetus comes in. Yeah. 
So, okay, um, the analogy that I've read from the book that I actually first heard him from was you're at the beach, mm-hmm. you know, and you go to the beach and... Um, oh, I've heard this example. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's an even better one that I came up with. But I'll, I'll start off with you're at the beach, you know, and then you're out there and then there's these massive waves and they keep crashing down. And then you've got two options. You can either be like, man, those are some really big waves. I can you know, sit here on the beach and suntan or whatever, or I can try to get past them or whatever. But still, they're pretty big, you know, so I'll, I'll just find a way to work around it. Or you can jump down on your knees, <laughs> you can th- bang at the floor, and you're like, no, the waves are crashing. And and you're so like, you're trying to tell the waves not to crash. Yeah, and you're getting, like, really worked up because and because you can't stop the waves from crashing. And you're, and you're trying, and you're like, oh, you've got psychic powers and stuff, but they yeah, just you, keep crashing. You're abusing the heavens and all the gods and that. And, but yeah. yeah, it's, it's like, no, I don't want the sun to rise tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Better Damn not. it, it's happening. <laughs> it's happening now, you know? Yeah. And, um. It's and when you think about it like that, it's kind of stupid, hey. Oh, you know, because you've got no control over the situation, and then you're screaming to the heavens about these crashing waves. Yeah, you know. And uh, I was reading a little bit of Eckhart Tolle, mm-hmm. and he mentioned it. And if you if you've listened to our one of our very early videos dealing with negative emotions, this mm-hmm. will make a lot of sense to you. But another good analogy is you go for a walk, and um, excuse me. Oof. Sorry, guys. It's a quick banana eating. Yeah, quick we, banana eating. We didn't break stride as far as our conversations. <laughs> Not <can> really. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you go on for a walk and then it starts raining. Mm-hmm. And again, you have two responses. You can drop to your knees and be like, no, nah, it's raining. My day's ruined. Ah, you roll around and crying in, in a ball in a fetal position on the side of the road. Or you, you walk through and you let it rain. Mm. And sure, the day might be wrecked, but you can learn a lesson from the flowers grow from the raindrops oh i like that yeah. that's that's classy almost and um i think that makes a lot of sense when you yeah. go back way way back when we first started this dealing with negative emotions the negative emotions is the rain yeah and then yeah. it's going to happen but you can learn something from the result of all that sort of stuff yeah learn you know, something about yourself change and growth change and growth absolutely yeah i i really like that one i i throw mm. that out i i, I think i just, just like Eckhart Tolle said something, and then I read Epictetus, Epictetus and I brought it together. I'm like, man, mm. I should write that down somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose now you have. Oh, well, yeah, in a way. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the whole idea behind it is if you don't have any control over the situation, there's no, like, you can't do anything. Mm. So just allow it to happen. It's going to happen either way. You've got no control. Even if, like, you try to manipulate the situation, like, as we were saying, you know, your girl goes out to the club. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. Okay. I'm going to personalize this a little bit. Sure. Talk about sure. myself. When I was a young teenager, and when I say young teenager, I mean 17, 18, mm-hmm. you know, um, I had my first girlfriend, that sort of stuff, new to the dating scene. I was pretty insecure. Mm-hmm. You know, I was teased a lot in school. I had a bigger head and a fat ass. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you want to you want you're being supportive and agree. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know you are. Was I, I can grin at the same time. Yes, it's nothing to it. Yeah, nothing I, to it. I know. I got. A, I have a head like a loaf of bread. Yep, yeah. I agree. Thank you, Scott. That's Thank right. you, Scott. Um, what was I saying? Okay, so I was teased. So I started a little bit of self-esteem issues. Yeah, yeah. as we all do. Yeah, and so um, sh- like we'd text and stuff. And if she didn't text back, I'd wonder what was going on. Or mm. She'd say she was going out, and then I'd just get worked up for no reason, stuff like that, you know. Mm. And um, yeah, it's, it's all that sort of little stuff, yeah. you know, because I didn't know how. Cause either way, if she wanted somebody else, I couldn't change that. If she wanted to do something, I couldn't change that mm. because the intention's there. No matter what I do, if she wants something, she's going to do it. Yeah. You know? Well, it's the same with anyone, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, you know? I mean... Your, f- your folks or your parents or your teachers or whatever, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that. It's like, well, really, I can just do what I want. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's just a reality. I think you said this to me once. Like, even if you hold a gun to somebody's head and force them into a position... You still just tell them to shoot you. I don't really care. Yeah, you can still... Sh- yeah, I mean, that's it. It's, <laughs> it doesn't really have much of an outcome for you, but you, you, it is always your choice, as narrow the field as it looks. It is always your choice. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're not going to go to ultimate freedom here and go, okay, someone's put a gun in your head, excellent. You know, flowers burst out of my 
armpits and then I fly off into the sky. I mean, it's, you know, yeah, yeah, some yeah. outcomes aren't going to happen. Yeah. Most right. of them are you've been shot or yeah. you have not been shot and now... But even if you force, like, if, if I hold a gun to some chick's head and be like, you're going to love me, otherwise I'm going to shoot you, you know, take me out to a mask, you know, and you're going to smile and shit, you know? Oh, yeah. But in the back of her mind, um, in the back of her mind, it's always been like, well, he held a gun to my head, so I'm doing this. Yeah, it's... You're, you're, you're coerced. Into yeah, the you're, you're basically coerced. It's not, not genuine. It's not yeah. real. They're, they're just playing a game until they can get away from your gun, and then they'll <laughs> run like hell. And that's exactly the same thing that happens in these these like situations in sparse relationships and trust and jealousy goes. You can coerce. <laughs> it's a dark angle, but yeah, I, I agree. Well, I agree. maybe you're thinking of it a little bit differently than me. <laughs> but <laughs> okay, what kind of club do you go to? Well. <laughs> Anyway, as I was saying, so I, ha- I held a gun to her head, right? And- yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, like, if you can, you can figurative, figuratively coerce someone into a situation mm. where she's like, well, I can't go and make out with four black guys mm. or, or, at once because the guy that I'm sort of seeing is here. But these, I hate when they do that. I hate when they do that. <laughs> Damn ship jumpers. But, yeah. <laughs> but, this, the, um, but the intention is still there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you have to just find a way to deal with it. Because I mean- it you can always put it in a morality kind of perspective. I mean, you don't do it because you have high morals, but really, a lot of it's you don't do it because you don't want to be punished, you don't do it, but that's... It's yeah, like, okay, go back to I, I'm with video. my girlfriend, but I see a really attractive woman that gives me a good look and all the rest. I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm tempted. I'm tempted. Oh, yeah. You know? Absolutely do. I go back and listen to our last week's video, Thomas Hobbes and Social Contracting. Mm-hmm. You don't do it because you don't want bad shit to happen to you. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> you know, you can convince yourself that it's moral stuff foreground for the most part it's probably not yeah i mean the kind of women i tend to like to have a <laughs> what's angry they're quite they're quite angry yeah scott man <laughs> <laughs> what, what sort of clubs do you hang out yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, <laughs> to be fair i'm gonna go into that but <laughs> yeah well <laughs> oh oh yeah <laughs> I just remembered what sort of clubs you yeah, 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 well, I got any club. I just like a good conversation, and the weirder they are, the better the conversations generally are. So. Yeah, well, that's generally your type of woman. Yeah. But anyway, let's get back on track. So, you worry about the things you can control. Mm. You know? uh, the things that you can't really change are things that you're just going to have to learn to accept. And, and you learn to accept these things by being aware that you can't do anything about it, I find. I find awareness is the biggest step. Yeah. I mean, honestly, as far as my own perspective, I, I tend to see it as a, a freedom kind of thing. I mean, it's you're not the one ultimately controlling events. You know, that's a very freeing thing. You respond. Yeah, events. that's it. You're you're just part of the mix. Mm-hmm. I mean, and though that can be scary, I guess, you know, it, it can be scary, you know. You, you don't have complete control of your life, and everyone knows that, though. But, um, well, it's like you said, you can't fly off into the sky. That's it. That's it. So, um, but yeah, you can, you know, you, you've got the freedom. You can formulate a lot of situations where you're in control of it, but for the most part, most of your life's going to be a series of responses and, and you can respond with a lot of exertion of strength as like overman sort of stuff. Yeah. Or you can respond in the best way that you can given the situation. Mm-hmm. Or I suppose you can crawl up into the fetal position and be a total freaking bitch about it. Yeah, you know? if you want. Always a choice. So yeah, man. Um, can't control it. Don't worry about it. That's it. That's Release it. it. That's it. I mean, all you can really control is you, mostly. You're, you you're, you're, again, you respond to situations. All right. So, okay. It's your attitude and your ability to jump on opportunity. Yeah. It really says how you're going to react well to a situation. But, but I suppose back to, back to the top. Well, back to, I'll, I'll give you another example of what happened to me, you know, like when I was early in my, I'm 23 now. So I've had a couple of years experience and that was before I started learning philosophy and things like that. Yeah. Um, after my introduction towards it, uh, I found Epict- Epictetus really later on in my philosophical study. Mm-hmm. And w- once I did, like even now, like there's a person who went out to a club and this is a couple of months back and she and I were involved for a little while mm-hmm. and she was just like, yeah, I'm just going to go out to the club and whatever. Now, normally, I would have been like, oh, I wonder what's going to happen. You know, all those deep-seated sort of insecure responses mm. would have come up. But it just it, it comes naturally. You don't, I didn't have to act. I didn't have to learn how to do it. It's just because I'm aware of pretty much what we're talking about, because I'm aware of all this sort of thing now. 
It's just sort of like, well, what happens, happens. Mm. And a lot of it comes, like, again, I think this video and our, and our third video, dealing with negative responses, is um, very closely related because a lot, of the, a lot of what this is has to do with the yielding. Mm. And when I say yielding, I mean, like, way, way back who it went. I'll, I'll re-quote it. But, you know, if something happens, you can either yield to it or you can resist it. Mm. And when you resist it, you become resentful towards it. But when you yield to it, you accept the situation. Mm. You know? well, I, I was reading a book a while ago. Um, someone passed on to me. It's like an e-book called The Ethical Slut. I've heard of it. Yeah, it's, it's about polyamory. Um, we won't go into it, but feel free to check it out on Wikipedia, guys and girls. It's a pretty interesting idea. But um, really the idea is jealousy was a good bit. I think that was the best bit of the book, talking about jealousy. And yeah. jealousy is a perfectly natural feeling. Agreed. And you can't just try to fight it. You can't push no, it down. Because and, it only makes it worse. Yeah, that's it. It always Because just then you become up. resentful because you're trying to push it and it's not working. Yeah, it's, it's an emotional response. Yeah. And like any emotional response, it's not rational and it's not pre-planned. You can't it just logically happens. attack an emotion. That's it. That's exactly right. So the best way to do it is just to explore it and just to realize it's perfectly natural and it will happen in any relationship and just, yeah. Do you yeah. Open a dialogue. Accept, and, accept it. Yield yeah, to yeah, it. it. Yield and accept it. Open a dialogue with your partner and just talk about it. I found that, oh, uh, uh, yeah, I agree. But I find um, opening it up with your partner gives it a uh, reality, even. Fair enough. I, I'm, I'm not saying don't talk with your partner. Please, fuck, please go out and communicate with your partner, for God's sakes. Mm. But for me personally, I found... If if I if I receive that emotion, I just remember I can't I can't change it. So whatever, yeah, and, just, and yeah. just ignore it and let it go. I mean, it depends. I think it really depends on the situation. Some things are just like yeah, whatever. I'll just let it go. Um, some things maybe if you've got an emotionally mature partner, you can discuss it. Yeah, it depends on the person. If yeah. you don't have an emotionally mature partner, then yeah, some topics aren't up for discussion because they just can't deal with it. Yeah, they can't accept it on an intellectual level, not just an emotional level. Agreed. Mm. Agreed for the most part. And it's very difficult to find an emotionally mature partner, especially in men, I'd probably have to say. Well, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. We're not exactly raised to be emotionally mature as far as jealousy is concerned. Oh, God, no. Well, the, 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 what's, what's the response that we've always been exposed to for jealousy? Crush the enemy. Yeah, enemies. that's it, dude. <laughs> you know? crush, crush the enemy's underfoot. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> so, um, it, yeah. Protect we, we, your patch. Yeah, you know, and we don't usually get that. Uh, you know, somebody, a really, a really good friend of mine once said was he was just having a philosophical ponder one day, mm, mm. and he he's like, in medieval times, it's a, it's a very good point. It's mm. a very good point. Um, in medieval times, uh, men sorted out their problems with the old pistol draw. Mm. There was a lot of violence. You know, it was violence was. That's an accepted part of society. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. People would fight. People would, would fight over shitty little things, hey? Mm. And what he said was... Well, the con- principle of shitty little things. Well, yeah, the principle of shitty little things. And what he said was war is essential for growth, mm. right? And so we, in modern day, create conflict and blow things out of proportions because we desire growth that we weren't getting as a natural human response. Well, that's it. I mean, that's Nations 101, you know. Okay, we've got diplomacy. No, nope, we've got war. I want something. You're not going to give it to me. Um, I'm going to extend war on a limited front not, to not, gain not, what not I want. Quite, think of it more of a personal level, individual level. Okay. So it's like, I can't just wail on this person and then learn something from them and grow as an individual. Mm. So I'm going to go around and bicker and bitch about them and complain and cause conflict and drama. Which is, an, which is a form of war, which is a form of conflict. Yeah, well, it is a war. So that I can grow from it. Yeah, well, basically, but you're, you're, not wrong from you're just moving your conflict, such as punching them in the face, to a different sphere. Yeah. It's and the same thing. It's, it's all conflict. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, know, you put two people, three people in a room, you get more than 10 people, you're guaranteed at least some of it. That's why large groups never work well. Yeah, I find I agree. That's why you need degrees. You know, notice, like, especially military circles, okay, you've got 10, 12 people. You have a person that leads them. 10, 12 people, person that leads them, person that leads them, person that leads them. Speaking and they have a chain of people because you can't deal with it past that point. It becomes a mob. 
people that, are jerks. And I do understand we're getting off topic, but I'm fine with that for the next minute or two. Sure. Um, if you ever noticed, you get a group of people, let's say 20 people. Yeah. And they're all sitting in a room studying whatever they're doing. Mm-hmm. And you tell them to break for lunch and the group will divide into two or three smaller groups. Absolutely. Always happens. Mm-hmm. Always freaking happens. Yeah. So it's impossible. The, the, a, a large group like that can't sustain itself. Mm. Too, too much energy is being floated around. Well, unless they're united by a common leader and common purpose. Yeah. But even then, you're more likely to get a common leader and a common purpose and then two or three sub-leaders who always have something to say who speak for two or three other people. Yeah, agreed, <laughs> agreed. Usually if you want a large group you might under a common purpose, you need violence against someone else is the goal or you've applied enough violence, whether, a, you know, emotional, logical, physical, to... And then we get back to them. war is conflict. Yeah, well, <laughs> war is just in the same reality as everything else. It's just a continuation of the sphere. Yeah. Anyway, back on topic. Int- that was interesting enough. I was I did enjoy talking about that. Works for me. Yeah. But again, if you can't deal with it, don't worry about it. Now, I, mm. now for me personally, I found that being aware of that was enough for it to completely leave out. A lot of this jealousy sort of stuff and a lot of these y- resisting sort of mm. emotions come from um, what I would or insecurities. And just, insecurities. There's something behind it. There's something that triggered you. Yeah. Jealousy. But for the most part, I think it's insecurities. I think a mm. lot of people, everybody's insecure, but there's a lot of people who are insecure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, we're sort of made to be insecure. That's how a lot of products get sold. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I found this is one way of taking a big step forward mm-hmm. away from your insecurities. This is a big step for dealing with your insecurities. All right. you, you're learning to yield and accept it. And being aware of what we're talking about, if you can't control it, release it. It's going to happen anyway. You throwing energy into it isn't going to make it any better. So it's going to make it tougher for you. So, um, Scott, you've obviously dealt with your level of insecurity very well. Mm-hmm. Would you agree? Yeah? Yes. For yeah. the most part. For the most part. We all have insecurities, part. but mm. you're, you seem very level-headed. How do you do it? What's the way you think about it? Is it similar to the way I did or what? I don't know. Mine, mine took sort of a strange path in a way. I mean, a lot of reading, a lot of thinking. But really, life, I can't control. But as much as I think I'm the ringleader in my own show, everyone's the ringleader of their own show. Everyone's their own person and is entitled to make any decision they really want to make, good or bad. They're going to do it. Mm. You know, all I can do is be, you know, as smart as I'm able to, as slick as I am as able to, <laughs> and to try to influence situations as best I can in the right path. But you can't. Um, what I do mostly is okay. I don't worry about bad outcomes because no matter how bad it can get, I can always just choose to jump off a cliff or something. That's really the way I think of it. Really? No matter how bad it is, I'm making the choice to be in this situation because I can always just eat a gun. So not exactly the no 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 no. I think, positive, I think that's the way tra- I think. I think about the, what you're trying to say is that a dog or is that a screen? No, that would be my dog. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Because I thought it would have been a screaming 12 year old. <laughs> um, I think the, the, the way I see that is you've chosen to stay yeah. in this conflicted situation as opposed to choosing the easy way out. Yeah, I've chosen life. Because I've chosen struggle. I've chosen growth. I've chosen in uncertainty. Yeah, because yeah, you've chosen it. Be. You see, that's, that's a form of yielding because you've accepted that's the case mm-hmm. and you're going to deal with it. I, 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 I don't want people to get confused. I don't. Correct me well, if I'm wrong. My mental shorthand has already made the thought, so well, yeah. that, that's just the way I explain it. Well, yeah. But I don't think suicide or the easy way out yeah. is the comfort for you. Because mm. I think the comfort for you is, well, I've chosen to be here. I can do that any, any time if I wanted. That's it. If I, I want- really want to, I can do that. Yeah. But but not that I've ever had any desire to do so. But- it's, well, it's an option for everybody. Dude. Mm. What, this is too tough for you? Kill yourself. Mm. <laughs> but you've chosen to accept, well, you know, this is the situation I'm in. I could go off and be a hermit mm. and not make any friends, eat out of bins and shit, rob banks or whatever, and just, just live like a goddamn outlaw. Yeah, but it's no, totally an option. I, of course it's an option. But I've chosen to be in this situation and fight it best I can. And if I end up with a shitty response, well, I chose that and I'm, I'm fine with that. 
Well, I, I find that kind of perspective mostly beneficial. Just the idea of hopelessness. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm, let, let's take it back to the female angle. Or girlfriend angle or whatever. Lover you know, angle. Yeah, that lover is probably the way to put it. Um, you, know, you know, they're at the club, this and that. You know, if, if you're feeling insecure, if you're thinking there's no way out, there's very much a way out. I mean, you, you can, can choose, dump her. Yeah, you can choose to not be with that person. You can choose to confront the issues. You can choose to confront the issues on her own because you're worried about it, you know, because of her behavior or what have you. You can confront it on your end. You're like, I don't really want to be jealous anymore. So I'm going to try to grow as a person to accept the fact that I can be jealous and that's okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think. So, I'll- the, so the easy way out, eating the bullet, is an analogy for doing the, doing the give up. Yeah. It's not necessarily go kill yourself. It's sort of like, well, if I don't want this anymore, then I can just end at any moment's notice. Yep. Just had to pause there. Well, the thing is, you're not really constrained at the end of the day. You think you are. You sort of put yourself in this tunnel vision that I'm in this situation. There's no way out. I'm 35. I'm not in the career I want to be. I'm with this girl. I'm married. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. But you're not. You can choose to stop doing whatever it is you're doing at any point. Hmm. You know, yeah. and, and having that perspective doesn't mean you have to do that. It doesn't mean, okay, I don't really want this job. Therefore, you pack up your job, move to Norway, and wrestle polar bears. Why can't you do that? You Be can the do- shark man. Yeah, you can if you want. Seriously, if you want to wrestle polar bears. Um, Good money. Uh, right? yeah, yeah, they do it in Finland, I think, and um, possibly Iceland. Um, they've got giant dogs that fight polar bears in Iceland. So go to Iceland. Are they, are they the, the giant Malmutes? Yeah, they're huge. Oh, those they're big. impressively large. I saw a, um, a Malute Malibu. It was like a giant cross between a polar bear and a wolf. Well, the idea is basically polar bears are like bigger than grizzly bears, eat nothing but meat, and are psychotic. Because the moment they see anything, they've got to eat it because they swim for miles and have to find it. Yeah. So they'll attack imp- like giant seals and and, 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 bloody, and, and shit, those so. um, tigers and shit yeah yeah so pretty much if it's a kind of animal that will go a polar bear that will attack a giant walrus to go mm. no nah, maybe i shouldn't fight this thing it's a big yeah. dog yeah, yeah so it was it was very intimidating <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um but yeah you can do it at the moment so it's just because what you think it's hard well, Stuff it, stuff that is hard. That's it. I mean, fighting the emotions that you can't don't, be fighting. Don't be locked into the fallacy of like, I don't know, like I can't remember the name of the fallacy, but it's basically okay. I've invested this much time in it. I have to see it to its conclusion, otherwise that time will be wasted. You made your investment. You want to get your return. That's it. Stuff your return. Who gives a fuck? That's Put it. Your investment into other shit. That's it. Your time is the most important investment you can ever make. You need to spend it in the best way you can. If you're not in a relationship that you really want to be in. And don't throw one away just because of an idle thought. But if you if it's something you really like, go for it. If it's something you're just coasting with because you feel like that you'll be lonely and miserable, have a think about it. Well, I, I, I want to continue on with the analogy of the lover response because I sure. think that's very universal. A lot of people have to deal with this. We've both dealt with it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to continue with it. Um, it's it. like you said, don't throw it away. Don't be like, well, you know what? I'm jealous and I don't like feeling this way. I'm insecure. So yeah, I'm it's just an emotional a... response. Don't let that dictate. It's, it's an emotional actions. response to something that's happening with yourself. Mm. You know? It's like you are reacting. But let's just say maybe maybe there are situations where a particular woman goes out to a club and maybe she is like pretty much open mouth kissing a horse or whatever, mm. you know? Sure, you can, but that's your response. There are some people out there who witness this and they're fine with it. They yeah. just don't give a shit mm. because that's their response. So it's not necessarily what's happening to them. A man, this is another Epictetus. Mm-hmm. You ready for it, Scott? You're going to like this one. All right, all right. A man does not respond to events. A man responds to the way he perceives them. Agreed. A hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I almost lost that one, but yeah, that's it. So it's not like you don't react to the event. You react to the way you see the event. Oh, there's a girl that I have a more than passing acquaintance with is currently kissing another female that's fairly attractive. No, that's my woman. Does that actually happen to you? Um, I don't mind if women make out with my women. Because you perceive As it long as they ask me, honestly. Nice. I've had it when they haven't asked me. I've had to go off at the moment. I think that's rude. <laughs> it is a little bit rude. Yeah, it's just a bit. I mean, I don't mind. I mean, it's it's nice to look at and all for the most part. But, uh, I'm not attracted to lesbians, uh, honestly, or bisexuality either. So yeah, they're kissing, but 
What do I? Get? I don't mind as long as, as long as my girlfriend's enjoying it, really. But I do prefer that I'm, you know, simply that I'm, you know, rook- I'm involved in some <laughs> consent in that because otherwise it's pretty much my woman's cheating on me. I don't really, I don't really it. appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ever been cheated on, Scott? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, I forgot mm. about that. A couple mm. of times, wasn't it? Yeah, a couple of times. Yeah, it's not a nice feeling, is it? No, not particularly. Yeah, no. but, but then it's like your perception of it changes after a little while. You well, know? it depends if I value the person. <laughs> Really? Have you been in a situation where you haven't really valued the person? Yeah, one, one, one relationship, yeah. Damn. So I was like, oh, okay, well, but we're still sleeping together, yeah? I was younger then, <laughs> probably a little more callous. <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago, Yeah, that, that is a very long time yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if you change the way that you view that situation, you're going to change the way that you react to that situation. Yeah. yeah, this person is going off and is doing things that would normally make me jealous, but I can't change that. Well, honestly, I think it, it's, I mean, females can definitely get very jealous of, you know, basically their men are, you know, reacting to other women in a way they don't enjoy. I mean, at the end of the day, I think people think of sexuality the wrong way. You know, the idea oh, yeah. that it's a, it's, a, it's a resource, it's a scarce resource. I mean, a man or a woman doesn't lose anything by sleeping with another person, oh, by really? making love. I mean, it could be oh, sex- Actually, you just- know what? I disagree because, well, okay, I, the only reason I disagree mm-hmm. is I'm a little bit more zen than you are. Okay. You don't, you don't, you're not really that zen and that's... Oh, it depends choice. on the reaction. But um, as far as thought processes, not so much. Yeah. Well, when you sleep with a woman, um, you, you, you release a lot of energy into them. Oh, I agree. Yeah. And I so agree you really do throw a lot of energy into a person. So if you sleep around, you, you really are throwing energy into people that you really shouldn't be throwing it into. Oh, that, that, see, that's fine. I, I don't mind that in like an energy body kind of idea. But as far as uh, your w- sense of worth and your... Basically, your perceived value doesn't lower just because you're someone. Oh, God, no. No, no, no. You know, it, it's not like someone, some woman is a, is a beautiful virgin and now she's defiled because she sleeps with someone. Now, guy. the only thing... That's not only... true at all. That's just silly. No, no, no. Well, you... That's just a power trip over women's bodies. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The only problem that I personally have with that is I don't like being viewed instrumentally. Yeah, yeah. Now, that's okay, it. Okay, when it comes to... We haven't spoken about values... Maybe we'll speak about that next week. Mm. Virtually, a quick little rundown. If you're something that's instrumentally valuable, is something that can get you something. So, like money is mm. instrumentally valuable because it can get me that really cool car. Mm. That really cool car is instrumentally valuable to me because it because it attracts attention from beautiful women. Mm. Beautiful women are instrumentally valued valuable to me because they make me feel good about myself. Mm. Feeling good about myself is inherently valuable to me because I feel good about myself. Yeah, that's it. You, know? you don't get to spend feeling good about yourself to do to something. Get some- you can't sell it for something else. Yeah, that's it. You oh, value- well, okay, well, may- maybe, sleazy, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, but, maybe. But then you're buying money to get the things you want to feel good about yourself in another way. <laughs> you're, being, you're, you're, <laughs> you're creating a loophole. Yeah, that's it. But. If it's inherently valuable, it's it's valuable for what it is mm. unto itself. And, and money is not inherently valuable. It's just a tool. It's instrumentally valuable because it's a tool to get you things that make you happy. Yeah. I'm hungry. I need to get a cheeseburger. Cheeseburgers are, are <laughs> instrumentally valuable because it stops you from being hungry. Well, no, I think cheeseburgers no. are still inherently valuable because, because they because fill your body so you don't die. No, 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 because that becomes... Okay, look. We'll have to debate this next week. Okay. But, well, let's not split hairs. I yeah, agree okay. with you. Okay. We'll split hairs <laughs> next week. Okay. But, um, yeah, I, I, I pref- if I'm going to sleep with someone, I want to be valued uh, inherently. Oh, yeah. I don't see the point of it. I mean, maybe it's just a pure sexual experience with no emotions involved. But I think on some level there has to be. I don't enjoy it. If it is. Well, yeah. I like the black pack and forth. The- yeah, yeah, yeah. The barter. Yeah. yeah. The barter. I don't know if it's barter. I don't know. Maybe not. But, um, yeah. You're not going to dick her for 10%, you know what I mean? That's, I yeah. usually settle for about 25. <laughs> <laughs> 25% extra. Uh, <laughs> um, no, nah, if I'm going to, I prefer to, to, to feel inherent to some degree. But you have to. Yeah. I don't think it's a good experience for that. But anyway, that's, that's just how I feel about the whole numbers game mm-hmm. thing. But no, I agree with you. I don't think that the amount of people that you've slept with changes how valuable you are. Yeah, exactly. In fact, if you listen to some, um, there's some guy on YouTube that I listen to a lot too. 
uh, R.S. De Jong, a real social dynamics. He's a yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know. He's a pickup artist, and I'm not really much of a pickup artist myself, but I think a lot of the ideas that he implements helps you ground into the situation, and it sort of it stops things like insecurity. Yeah, the, the, the pickup artist community is interesting as far as social dynamics and yeah. uh, and all the rest, but there's really an underlying I need women to feel valuable. Yeah, so you have to take it, you really do have to take it with a grain of salt and don't accept it for what it is face value. Yeah, I I think underlyingly a lot of these these people have real emotional issues and they're masking it by conquering women and turning them into basically, okay, now I've had this beautiful woman, now I can feel valuable about myself. Yeah, and that, again, a different sort of insecurity. Exactly. Admittedly, they're good at the tips and tricks, I suppose. Yeah, but you can you can take thing. you can take their tips and tricks to to learn how to. Yeah, it doesn't you, have to be about women. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You're always selling yourself. Um, but they say they can be as sexual as they want. Mm. It's your response to it that has to change. Yeah, women women's most uh, most powerful asset is their sexuality. Well, women are sexuality. Women are sensual beings. Agreed. Men aren't sexual. Not really. Men are masculine and powerful and strong. The lifters, the, the workers, the, they go out and get things. Women have all this sexual essence about them. Mm. For the most part. For the most part. Obviously, there are bits too back and forth. <clears throat> but for the most part, yeah. Mm. Would, you, don't, you don't seem completely convinced. Uh, I, I don't know. I think definitely um, women are far more sensual than men. They're very much more intuitive and... They have more intuitive. sexual energy. Oh, yeah, okay, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm getting at, you know? And the masculine energy is not really sexual energy. I mean, it, it can be very sexually driven, mm. but there's, there's not much sexual energy yet as to what it is of itself. Well, not to the same degree. Not to the same degree, no. Well, I don't think we can really discuss it anymore without going into the anima animus and... Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll get into yeah. that. We'll get into that another video. Get complicated. But yeah, um... Let go, accept the things that you can't control, can't control them. It's going to happen anyway, so you may as well just deal with it and let go of it and then respond to the situation the best you can. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, situations and opportunities are going to come hard and fast at you folks without really whether you're ready for them or not. So the best thing you can do is to be in a situation where you know yourself really well and you do your best to better yourself and understand that the emotions that you're feeling are just emotions. And there's nothing, no one to be blamed by that. Don't blame yourself for emotions. They're just emotions. There are, you know, deep-seated feelings beside you that elicit emotions. And they're just emotional reactions. And that's okay. And the best thing that you can do is understand where your insecurities are. Do your best to overcome them. Do your best to grow as a person. And I suppose if you grow as a person and still realize that the partner you're with is acting in such a way that would cause you jealousy that maybe they're not as, you know, they're, they're way they're, yeah, maybe they're not compatible anymore. Maybe mm-hmm. you've done a bit of growing and, you know, you realize you're just with them because of reasons that aren't emotionally fulfilling for you. You know what else? Um, I'll, t- I'll just tell the story because I, I like t- telling particular messages through stories. Sure, sure. So a little while back, I was seeing... A woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was a, an English teacher. And um, that really grabbed my attention because I find intelligent women really, really... She was cute, too. She was. She was. She was cute. And she seemed to be genuinely intelligent. I mean, she was an English and geography teacher at a high school. That was very... She, and she liked reading. Mm. So, I do like reading. Oh, well, I'm a, oh, I do like reading. I'm going to get more into it. Mm. I'll just start reading again. But anyway, back on track. So, yeah, she, um, I was very, I was, she really definitely grabbed my interest. So, um, we went out, bought her a drink, you know, talked for a little while, went back to her place, we watched a little bit of footy or whatever, because she's a big, big Roosters fan. Fair enough. Personally, not into football, that sort of stuff, which is funny because I'm in the fitness industry and I'm doing strength and conditioning, all that sort of stuff. But anyway, (laughs) so she was the footy fan, so we watched a bit, yeah, 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 it was all going good. But, um, she wasn't really responsive. So, okay. so I'd be like, hey, how you doing? Hope your day is going well. And I'd hear from her maybe a week later. Mm. So she, she, not a lot of effort was being put in on her part. Now, um, the old me would have been tearing my hair out, going crazy. She hasn't texted me in like 
all day. Yeah. How hard yeah. is it just to be like, oh, hey, how you doing? Was that, she actually stood me up twice. Yeah, I remember you telling me. Yeah, you. yeah. So um, I, I, was, I wasn't upset. I was a little bit more frustrated and annoyed by that. But she'd forgotten from memory. Yeah. Which is the, the first time. Which she, is just silly. Which is just, yeah. And so, but like, like I said, it's the way you react to it. So mm. I could have called her up and been like, F this, whatever, whatever. But to be honest, I was pretty calm about the whole situation. I was pretty unhappy about it. Mm. But, because uh, it's never happened to me before. But yeah, I, um, so I, I just texted her and like, hey, we doing this? And she's like, oh, sorry, I completely forgot about it. I'm like, really? We spoke about it like six hours ago, you know? Um, and so she wasn't, I, uh, I dealt with it pretty well. Because mm. I realized it's got nothing really to do with me. I can't change the situation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. often it's not about you anyway. Well, yeah. And even if it is about you, so what? Yeah, it's about what you can do? bring to the table. Well, yeah. But, you know, it's not about you personally. Exactly. But you can either change what you don't like about yourself, or it, like even if they find something in you that you don't like, that you do like, so what? Just walk mm. away then. Well, that's it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's... You know, it's you're, you're with them to have a good time and to do things that are valuable to you. If you don't find that's the case, then walk away. I mean, it's not a numbers game. Oh, maybe I could have scored with this chick or whatever. It doesn't matter. You know, it really doesn't well, matter. Well, yeah, and that's the point that I was really trying to get to. Like, um, it, it, it doesn't matter. You've got no control of the situation. So I just sort of stopped talking for a little while. We just ripped it apart and... Then after like a month or two, oh, I, I just got rid of a number and all that sort of stuff. But it's got like, you can choose to be the really insecure about yourself and be like, why isn't she doing this? Why is she doing this? What's going on? Or you can be like, well, you know what? I can't actually change this situation, but I can respond to it the best I can. Yeah. I mean, and then you just take a step back and be like, okay, then. Well, I find that I, I tend to get that way if people don't respond. I'm like, what's happening? What's going on with this, this and that? Um, with some women, um, I can be, some I know are, are fine. Others, I don't know what's going on with them. So I Ooh, tend yeah. to worry. And, um. So what happens when you worry? Uh, I don't know. I just sort of get stressed out and just try to be rational about it, really. You know what I do? I take three really deep breaths. Mm. I feel each breath as I breathe it. I yeah, really that, that's a good about. technique. I, I think there's one where it's like five, five second breaths as well. There's a whole bunch of relaxation techniques that are effective. I mean, the idea is really, okay, you are reacting emotionally. You're not thinking rationally. And the best thing you can do is just try to calm yourself down and think about things. And remember that everything in life is not just a reaction to you. I mean, you may be the be the number one in your own story, but everyone else is the number one in their story. And maybe they got a legit reason. Maybe their phone was off, was off charge. Maybe they ran out of credit. Maybe they wanted to react, but they're having lunch with their mum at the moment. And they chatted for an hour and just didn't look at their phone. Hmm. They heard a beating, like a text noise, but forgot about it for the moment. Had lunch, have a chat. They're sitting down on the couch watching a game with the folks. And they're like, oh, wait, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. You know, Roy texted me an hour ago. Yeah. Yeah, easy peasy. And um, if you can't control it, then just accept it. That's what's happening. Yeah. You can't, you can't friggin' change it. I mean, and just because accepting doesn't mean you have to roll over and be a doormat and accept the behavior. If it's really bothering you and it's a deal breaker for you, let it be a deal breaker for you. Maybe... Like Roy, you didn't appreciate the fact that they weren't being serious with the time you were investing with them hmm. and standing you up. And you're like, no, as cute as she is and as smart as she is, I don't think she's taking this seriously, so I'm going to have to let her go. Well, that was exactly it, you know. And, and, and you handled that very maturely from thank, memory. Thank you mm -hmm. very much for that. I really do appreciate that. In the well, past, I know that I would not have. I would have lost my shit. No, I've got to answer you honestly. Well, you did it well. Thank you. I, 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 I've always appreciated your honesty. If I'm being a dickhead, you'll tell me, Roy. Mm. Being a dickhead, <laughs> well. and I appreciate that because not a lot of people can be honest with me. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, well, the point that I was really trying to hammer home there was obviously this person really got my attention because you know, and the intelligence side was very attractive to me. She was cute, obviously, it's obviously very attractive. <clears throat> Doesn't matter how compatible you think you are with a person. There's one or two things that you really don't really don't decide. You don't try to make excuses and be like, well. She's got 15 ticks in the good column, but two ticks in the really bad column. So I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. If those two things are really, really like, just incompatible with you, 
well, you can't change her. You can't that's change it. the situation. I mean, you can change the way you see it. Yeah, that's it. You can change the way you see it. I mean, maybe you change the way that it's not a deal breaker for you. Maybe you accept them faults and all and do your best. I mean, you know, no, no one's saying you just if those two ticks are a big problem for you, you can't decide to have a relationship with them anyway. But no, that's your choice. That's it. That's your choice. And you and generally, you I advise against it. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I think Roy's a bit quick to, uh, all right, here's a problem, so we're going to, you know, that's a deal breaker, boom, cut away. But um, I tend to be a bit more, see what's going to happen first. But really, you if know. It's a big deal, if that's a big deal breaker. Oh, I think, if, honestly, if so someone stood just me up twice, I would have just dropped it like a hot rock. <laughs> I gave her about a week after that. Yeah, I, like, I might have done it after the first time. I'm like, I've got to have a serious talk with you. Is you being serious about this? Because I don't want my time wasted. Hmm. You know, I, I want to get out there and I'm invested emotionally. I want to spend my time with someone. If they don't want to do the same, then that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to get mad about it, but I don't want to spend time with them. Anymore. Yeah. But to be honest... Don't, uh, just don't take life personally because life is not personal. Life isn't personal. That's the best thing. I, that's the best advice I can ever give. Oh, yeah. Don't life take life personally. It's happening personally to you, but it's not personally about you. It's just life. It happens. Damn it, Scott. I had a really good point. I finally remembered why I was telling that story. <laughs> Sorry, man. And I'm just mad. And you fucking had to, you piece of shit. Oh, you've I'm done it for me. I know, I know, yeah. I know. You just <laughs> give it back to me. But it was really good. It was a really good point. What was I trying to say? I think it was something about, um, oh, yeah, the emotional exchange. Yeah. Okay. Uh, investment and return. That was it. Sure, um, sure. So, you know, yeah, I put a lot of um, investment. I invested a lot of energy and focus and shit like that into mm, this person. Mm. And I didn't get any back. So, but just because you do that, there's no reason why you just you can't just be like, you know what? I'm gonna pack up and fight polar bears. Yeah, that's it. And that's that's virtually what I did. I went, okay, I've given her a lot of chances. I've decided I don't want to do this anymore, so I'm just gonna pack up and go. Yeah. And it did, and it didn't involve you know tearing the world apart. I mean, it's just a matter of just done, do it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, you've got to make good decisions about the direction you want to take your emotional and financial and. And all the rest of life. I mean, if someone, friends, family, relationships that you're really not being taken care of, you're not getting some sort of, you know, enjoyment out of it and you don't value the time, you know, maybe you shouldn't be doing that. You know, I mean, I'm not going to make your decisions for you. So don't say that Scott means you don't talk to your mum anymore, but <laughs> you know, she might be loud and annoying, but she's still your mum and you should be good to your mum. But really, at the end of the day. How is your mother, by the way? Oh, I saw her a few minutes ago. She's good. <laughs> she's good. Made a good, made a good lunch. I'm, I'm with my folks at the moment. But um, yeah, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it's what it's not like a transaction, but at the end of the day, it's exchange. It's social exchange. I find this is a really hard topic to talk about. It is. Because I'm try we're trying to make a point that we both understand, mm. but we can't really put it into words. Yeah. Because it's an emotional state. You have to learn to just... It, this is what... Like, I'm really hoping that being aware is enough right now. Yeah. Well, if you're going to get jealous, if you're going to get emotional, be aware of it. Calm down. Think about it rationally. At the end of the day, you well, don't well, have to do when you say, I have to interrupt. When you say think about it rationally, I think what you're trying to say is think about the facts that you can't change it. And if you can't change it, you shouldn't worry about it. Because remember, yeah, you can't yeah. logically attack an emotion. Good point. Good point. I'm oversimplifying. You, well, yeah. But for the most part, I think what you're trying to say is calm down. Think about the facts. This is what's happening. This is what I can do about it. Therefore, I should worry about this and yeah. forget about this. What's the direction that's good for me? Yeah. Live your life like the, the main character in a movie. Yeah. Main characters in a movie don't get worked up over shit they can't change. Yeah, be Harrison Ford. Seriously, that guy's cool. I like Harrison Ford. Mm. He's a good actor. If someone's really good with a sword, shoot them with a pistol. <laughs> don't muck around. <laughs> Stop effing about. And get the girl. Have a lasso. Yeah. Women love lassos. Or something. Some, something along those lines. Mm. Anyway, I think if we just keep talking, we're just going to keep repeating at the same points that we've sort of been saying. Well, we like to hammer it home, guys and girls, you know. Well, yeah, well, uh, I find we speak the way Mark Rowlands writes. He makes mm. the point, then he makes the point again in a different way, then he'll make the point again in an even more different way. And if you still haven't got the point, he'll make a quick summary, and then go, well, you know what? I'm moving on to the next chapter now. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. 
Yeah, and I like that. So well, um, people think of it different ways and learn different ways. So yeah, so the more ways we can explain it, the better. I guess. Well, that's why I kind of like giving it the point, giving mm-hmm. the philosophical point and the form we read it in, then giving an example, then talking about it, then giving another example, and then wrapping it up. Yeah, and I think that's the form that I like taking with our talks. I think so too. It, you know, get that natural conversation. And I think well. we break up the sections by going off topic, talking about polar bears and shark men and mm-hmm. and. Um, Gay Jews. Yeah, yeah. That was our first video. Yeah, that's a small pool of people. If you've, you've seen our first video, yeah. Just, <laughs> just, just watch our first just video. Just watch the first video. Just watch it's the a first. long story. That was, yeah, that's <laughs> kind of hard to describe, hey. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to call that a wrap. Mm-hmm. Uh, any any questions in response to this, please yeah. let us know. Mm-hmm. Well, we're there to talk to, you, talk to you guys and all the rest. That's what we like doing. That's why we're doing it now. Take care. Catches. <laughs>